Hey, welcome back to the studio. I want to jump on here today and we're going to start at the basics, getting the beeswax and melting it, filtering it. I want to show you the different types of beeswax first that I get and then encourage you to find a beekeeper that you can get beeswax from instead of buying it at a at an art supply store. Although if that's your only option, then of course do that. But uh, yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the camera down so you can see all my different variations of beeswax and we'll go from there. I'm just gonna move it around this morning. All right, so let's start with, if, if you're fortunate enough to find a beekeeper and in, what I did was just get online and I searched beekeepers in Nashville and Nashville Beekeeper Association popped up and fortunately, I um, sent a message to the group and just said, I'm a artist and I work with beeswax. I'd love to meet a beekeeper that would sell me some beeswax. And I found uh, Barry Richards, who's been an awesome resource. I've learned a lot about bees. I didn't, I'm not a beekeeper. Um, really interesting. One day, maybe I'll get into that. But right now I'm focused on art. But anyhow, Barry's, he's, when I first met him, let's start here. He was bringing me blocks, one pound blocks, but similar to this, filtered wax that uh, he was selling mostly to candle makers. So candle maker would take what he gave them, those, these little blocks, and then they would pour it in their molds for their candles. Um, of course, with the wick in it. And he... This last batch of wax I got from him, he had some that I guess that didn't work out too well. So you'll see a lot of beekeepers already do the rendering for you, the filtering, and it comes in these different variations of color depending on the location the bees are getting their pollen, which is really interesting. I've bought, you know, five or six blocks of beeswax from Barry, and they'd be a variation of colors from really dark to a really light you know similar to this right here so it just depends on the season i guess or where they're getting their pollen from that causes a different color in the beeswax which is kind of cool so if you meet a beekeeper that doesn't prepare it for candle makers you might end up with something like this this is called the capping so when they go in to harvest the honey they scrape off the stuff that's on top of the comb and it's a mixture of just bee parts honey there's it's of course beeswax in there but it takes quite a bit of this to melt down to get what would look more like this so this has been at least melted down from this right here and then what happens is depending on who and how they do it it's going to come out looking still going to have all the junk in it but it's going to be more separated and it's more condensed I guess is the thing so a lot of the, the lighter stuff will float to the top of course and the honey will go to the bottom and yeah you get these and I'm, I'm not sure how they get to this what what kind of device they use to melt it but a large part of the time this is how I receive my beeswax it's in these chunks now receiving it like this is fine it's like I said it's just a little more work because you got to melt it down filter it and then um, I can't just throw this in the crock pot and because it'll have all kinds of stuff floating in it I've tried it now this has a lot of impurities in it and you can throw it in a crock pot and what happens is because it doesn't have as much as what's in the cappings the, the the honey and the impurities most of those will go to the bottom and then you'll have clean wax on top and I've, I've done that to a point then I gotta clean my crock pot after a while so what I do is I filter it to where it looks like this and I'm gonna show you in a, here in just a minute the pan I created that has a filter on it and a little box on top I put the cappings or this dirty beeswax on top put it in the oven for two 
two hours at about 200 to 225 and what happens is it filters through this paper towel and I'll explain it again here in just a little bit um, and it when it goes into the pan there's some water in there this will float and then the honey and impurities will be either caught in the paper towels as a filter or be sunk down below uh, the pan of water so all right I think that is a in a nutshell how my paintings start it's it's not just having some beeswax and putting it on a panel I many times I have to get it to a point where I can use it where it's it's clean enough for the panels now I've got honey all over my fingers so we'll um, let me go grab my pan show you how it's melted and then I've got the crock pot on and then we'll do a demonstration of applying the beeswax to the panels and the tools and things that I use to do that.